What's up, nerds? We are in New Jersey. This is. So Chris. Yeah. <laughs> this is. I've only been here for like eight years, ten years. <laughs> this is Formula Drift. Say your name. Round four. Uh, New Jersey, English Town, Old, old Town, uh, what? Old Old Bridge Township. Yeah, Old Bridge. Loading in. Let's go get unloaded. It's Wednesday. We're chilling. It's a prospect event, so the paddock is super packed. We're gonna have some fun. We had uh, a lot of fun in New York. Chilling. Chris didn't. He just flew in. He just uh, did that 5 a.m. flight stuff, so he might be tired. Look at that. We're all screwing All right. I gotta sneak in here. Let's go. It's still in there. Nice. You bounced around too hard. You never know. Sometimes you open it up and they're on the side. <laughs> It'd be sketchy. Uh, I mean, sometimes you open up, you know, like over there. You're like, oh. Walking New Jersey track here. All right, track walk. You can see that this was a little drag strip. That pavement. Much different from this pavement. It's the newest pavement. All right, end of zone one. You see this little drop off right here. Anyways, put a tire off here. Judges are definitely going to know it. Crossing over is a fun, dangerous little area. I say dangerous because, you know, you gotta go over this little hoop right here. Transition like crazy. Late as possible into that outer zone. All right, big part into zone two is getting in and filling out outer zone two as early as possible. This is an area where dangerous because of the dirt on the wall. I need to get as far as as possible. So what I like to do is before I come to this zone, I look at the grass about 20 feet back over there. And then just, you know, if you're doing it right, you're puckering. A little butt pucker right here. Get on left foot brake and just keep riding. All right, getting to the end of zone two, which is a lot of left foot braking making sure you are outside of the line. And if you're in the chase, it's just trying to mimic as best you can in the chase, keeping the same type of angle. I like to keep the same angle, try not to shallow up too hard. Coming into this section is where, I think if you go as wide as possible, it will set you up really good for being fast through this part of the inner clip. And if I sound like I'm tired, it's just because it's freaking hot here. It is blazing hot. Let me go get some cold dock. We're waiting on ice. All right, we're back over here in the pits. Now, uh, we got the whole crew finally. David flew in. Jackson's been here. The rest of the boys have been here. So we're working on a few things, making the car look nice. We had that like big old mark up the side, thanks to uh, Novak. But you know, we wanna make sure that Evil Auto Works thing looks nice. So we're replacing these uh, front knuckles, Heart Shop Max made us some new trick knuckles that actually have an Ackerman adjustment that's going to go in there. It's going to be pretty dope. Let's see if we can sneak over here and check one of those out. So Ackerman is the, the difference of angle each tire is going to have when it's at full lock. And so these little washers can now come out, rotate, put it in, or uh, throw in a center set to adjust where you want your Ackerman to be. So, yep, very short explanation of that. There's way more to it. You should look it up if you're into drifting. Pretty cool. All right, boys, it is Thursday. We're driving in a few hours, nine in the morning. We have our driver's meeting. It's about 10 o'clock right now. We've got a few hours. We're gonna go watch Prospect, see what they're up to, um, see if we can pick up any ideas, anything different. I got a lot of sim driving on this one this year. Uh, probably put in a good like 80 laps before I left my house, so it's pretty cool. It's really just helps on the visualizations. This particular track, they did a really good job of designing it. So like where the grass is, small things like on the ground really help us as drivers to be able to like pick up eyesight on those things. So hoping that that comes into play and helps me out this year. Got a few ideas of where I want to initiate different from last year and where I want to look at in the uh, chase car different from last year and where I want to angle up. A couple of small things, you know. So as pro drivers, we're still always learning. It's still always something different. You know, we gotta always keep teaching ourselves and figure out how to be better.
right, boys, we've had ourselves a good four hour little chill out. Now it's time to go get back to work, get in the whip. Uh, we watched Prospect a little bit. We watched um, their Prospect seating bracket. And everyone's in line. We were allowed to line up 30 minutes before we start our practice, so it's the big chill zone over here. So we did four laps so far, hoping to get another eight. If we get another six, we'll be good. Let's go play with it. dudes it is freaking what is today friday it's friday today's the day where we're just chilling only prospect drove today me and andy doing some, our autograph sessions with the rest of the nerds dylan last time brought his uh tent out so we did the favor and brought our tent out this time so yeah big chilling hanging out don't do anything till tomorrow so get back at this film more things tomorrow Bye. all right autograph sessions over taking my umbrella back to our pit area we got some chilling to do prospects gonna be going down we're gonna go watch some hang out hopefully beat this heat and then we party tomorrow morning 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 okay saturday main day time to play damn there's already people in the grandstands behind us uh let's see did we talk about an awesome spot that we have out here in new jersey um thursday when we were practicing man it was hot uh i was able to get a lot of my gopro footage for the runs like midday because there was a good like break in the day and then we went and did out went and did six runs and after i did those six runs i knew that i had all day on friday to possibly uh you know pull the footage look at it do whatever my dumb ass went and formatted the carts so all six of those runs, I did not get on the GoPro. I wasn't able to, to uh, look at the footage, check out my in-car stuff that I like to do. Uh, luckily, I've got what Matt uh, always texts me, my spotter, um, so I can look at those runs, but man, that sucked. Anyways, uh, it's already heating up, looking like it's gonna be a beautiful, hot-ass, sweaty day. We're already over there. They're just polishing the car. We've got our setup for what we wanna do. Andy, they're all chilling and ready. So we're just waiting for the day to start. Um, it's like 10 o'clock right now. We're waiting until 11.15 to go line up and go have a ball. So let's see if I can try to hop on here a few more times, tell you how the day's going, how the car's working in this crazy ass tandem track. Look at the situation, they got me facing. I can never know. I
All right, dudes, I am an absolute mess in the car, uh, but outside I'm feeling okay. Let's see, I've done four laps so far. First lap was a chase, that was with Forsberg. Felt pretty confident and on point. The track was really nice at that time. Went did my lead run in front of Osmo. Most of it felt pretty good. I think I transitioned too late going into outer zone three. And when I did that, uh, I maybe put one tire off, possibly two. That would be a zero if I put two tires off on this particular track. Like track was getting kind of greasy, tires getting hot. Uh, the boys did a very quick tire change. Went out for the uh, third and fourth lap. Let's see, I chased Rad Dan on my third lap and he uh, he hit the wall on entry. So I pretty much screwed up the whole first section of the chase. I was able to tuck back behind him into outer zone two to finish it out. I don't think he did good in his zone three though. I'm not sure, but we were riding it, you know, all good. Went to go do my lead run uh, in front of Dimitri. Pretty good run overall, except the tires felt greasy. Basically, the track temperature has gotten up to 137. Possibly the blacktop out there where we're really running it might be 140, 145. So it's got like a greasy feeling to it. Where we would have been at, let's say 70 to 100% throttle earlier yesterday or earlier today, I'm probably more like 50% throttle right now and floating around that area. But uh, yeah, we're in line to go do two more practice laps possibly. Um, kind of rare to get six laps in. We'll see if we do it. And, uh, but I'm feeling pretty confident and uh, stoked to go through this. You know, all the boys are working with the same conditions. I just don't have a cool suit, man. I'm burning up in here. It's all good though. You know, lose some weight, drink some more beer, have some doc, have some fun. Doc bombs, bro. Let's go. Here we go. Jeff Jones is getting a buy run. We gave you the updates there via Kevin Wells and, and of course, Odie Bakshis. But so uh, how it unfolded is Simon Olson pulled to the burnout box. He will receive points, but he obviously is pulling in, getting called that competition timeout, obviously unable to run. Sal save the motor. Yeah. Save it for St. Louis. Jeff Jones, yes, he hit that cone, but he's just going to have some fun here. And uh, this is a good shakeout run for him. That Evil Auto Works Nissan 370Z. He is a, uh, he's having a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah, but he would, he would love to get on the block, he wants to get on the podium. He, uh, he, we were chatting a little bit earlier, he was telling me about some like preventative maintenance stuff that he was doing, and I don't want to like blow up the spot, but like some really interesting preventative maintenance that he oh. thinks may have caused other issues and later on. It was, it was kind of neat, I mean, maybe, uh, uh, we'll, we'll see if we can maybe get elaborate the details yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to blow up anybody's spot, right. but like a small maintenance item that could have caused a massive issue and they caught it early, so. All right, dudes, I haven't been filming as much as I'd like to, but I did the FD uh, Formula D takeover Instagram, so that's been keeping me pretty busy. Uh, just went out for my battle with Simon Olsen. Unfortunately, that dude popped a motor. So he literally just went to the burnout box, called his five, and then he was out. So nobody wants to win that way. And honestly, it would have been a freaking really epic battle, and I really wanted to go against them. Of course it's good to get the win. It, you know, it's just awesome to progress and move forward. God damn, you want to kick someone's butt appropriately, right? Let's just get the pumps right here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go walk up to the Kumo Tire booth, hang out. They've got a VIP spot. So I'm going to go hang out there for a second and you see it cool off, watch a few laps. Uh, I threw a 360 in my buy run, and that's fun. I wanted to go harder, but... Man, I got bad luck with buy runs. I don't want to hit a wall and do something dumb. So I just threw those 360s at the end of the run. All right, dudes. Top 16, open ceremonies. We got a big crowd behind us. Jackson, we get out some glasses for these people? I think we can do that. Let's get them all out. So top 16, we're about to party, open ceremonies. I don't think we know what we're gonna do. Uh, we'll find out what we're gonna do here in a minute about you know dancing and whatnot. Let's just have some fun. I hear my name. You know what it is. What it is? What it is? You know what you gotta do? You give it, gotta give it that hot to and spit on that thing. That's exactly what I anticipated. It was. I, I, we're, yeah, we got the East Coast West Coast battle. Adam originally from Connecticut, now living in Florida. Jeff Jones, SoCal, till he dies. So. Adam LZ, he's got that breezy on the hood, and after this event's over, we're gonna crank some breezies over there at Sneaky Pete's. That's right, Jeff Jones. He's a he's he's a he's a comedian as well. 
Yes. Yeah, with that, with that, with that, with that, yeah. He's, Great dance. I didn't know he, I didn't know he was part of the Audubon Society. Ah. Talking about hawks and whatnot. So yeah, that crazy. was that was pretty sick. So excited to uh, see what Adam LZ. He won here last year. Different car, Mustang. Um, the RTR camp, now he, he he stepped back from RTR, now he's campaigning his very own car, the BMW E36. He's comfortable in it, he's looking good, he knows his track, he competes in the Gambler, and here we go. Oh boy, Adam LZ goes to that first outside zone, can't even see Jeff Jones, buried in that smoke, now going to that second big 183 outside zone two, and now let's see how this transition goes into outside zone three. Jeff Jones just pierces that smoke, comes up a little bit short as Adam LZ digs deep in outside zone three that's a wrap on run one of this battle it's always amazing to me like i said that how they come through that's muscle memory yeah you Which, can't you can't see anything it is all just based on timing adam lz doing what he did to win last year which is an amazing initiation to almost shake the driver off behind you jeff jones does a good job to anticipate his spotters in his ear now jeff could have been a little bit deeper through that second outside zone through the inside clip everything looks good now as they transition into the third outside zone same thing jeff could have been a little bit closer, but look at how long Adam LZ is initiating for. And smooth. It, it, it is one fluid movement all the way through this. Yeah. Textbooks what the judges are looking for. And yeah, Jeff Jones doing everything he can basically to, to keep up, but Adam very smooth out front, super committed to all the turns, and Jeff, Jeff's doing a good job in the chase. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. It's no, just, it's just, it's tough. Yeah. He, he was right there, I got to say, until that last outside zone three. Yeah. And, and But he still did, like I say, pierce through that smoke and how he did that. That was really impressive. Just a little bit short. So Jeff Jones, he's, I mean, he's feeling the flow right now. He's got that big drift energy like it says on his roof. Here we go. Jeff Jones, that evil auto works from Redlands, California. Oh, and, oh look at that. Okay, we're going to take a look at that. Looked like Adam LZ checked up, maybe was a little too aggressive, had to back off as Jeff Jones. Now in that second outside zone, Adam LZ massages it to the side of that Nissan 370Z of Jeff Jones. Now transition, how they manage this smoke here in outside zone three, that angle. Doesn't show sure you exactly where Adam LZ's at, but right there at the end, you saw him right in that outside zone three. Let's get that aerial view, the truth serum, as we like to call it, the drone pilots, Aaron Jesse and Justin Smash up in the sky. Yeah, so Adam tries to anticipate what Jeff is going to do and gets on the throttle maybe a little bit sooner than Jeff does. Now, he does make the correction to get back in the pocket. It is going to be a mistake. The judges aren't going to look at that. But he is able to salvage the rest of the run. It looks pretty good doing it. Jeff Jones doing a good job through that second outside zone. Just tapping that inside clip. And then through the third outside zone, I would have liked, liked to see Jeff a bit deeper. He does get both wheels into that box, but not until later in the run, but yeah. Adam LZ very close to impeding the initiation of Jeff Jones there. Just wrangles it in in time though, but in doing so, misses a large portion of that first outside zone. So It was impressive how he did get back to the side of him going into outside zone two. Yeah. He did collect, he did collect a, a little bit of energy and it seemed like he could surge forward and get to the side of him. That was, that was slick, but all right. Again, we don't call it, we just call the action.
right, dudes. I'm over here. We're already packing up. Uh, battle with Adam was pretty fire. I did the things that I needed to do. A couple mistakes uh, on my end. Let's see. Looking back at the battle, um, initiation could have been a little tighter. Going into zone two, I wish I was chasing his bumper a little bit better. I shot too far inside. And then I think after that, it was mostly okay. Uh, chased him through zone two pretty good. Transition into zone three pretty good. Um, could have been tighter in zone three. Could have had more angle behind him in zone three. He was a pretty boss move throwing it into zone three. Going into my lead run, let's see. Uh, I threw a pretty good angle into it. I like the little initiation that I did. Uh, going past zone one, I felt like it was pretty good. Angle was good. Uh, throttle commitment was good. In the zone, pretty good. And then transitioning into outer two, maybe a little hesitant. He had a big mistake behind me going into outer zone one. So there's some discrep discrepancy, whatever that word is, about maybe, you know, some people were like, not discrepancy. Some people are like, hey, you should have won. But that's just one part of the run that he made a mistake on. He did a really good job of getting behind me in zone two, chasing me and mimicking my angle. And then going into three, I hesitated as I went into zone three. And he did a better job of like mimicking my angle, getting right behind me and following it through. So even when I look back at it, I think that I would have called him for the win. My team, my wife, uh, they're upset. You know, they love me and think that I should have got the win. Uh, these are hard calls, and especially when they're close like that. But I had an absolute blast. Car's feeling good. Tires are feeling good. Suspension's dialed. Uh, I mean, I know I'd say this like nonchalant, but like we were chasing a good setup out here to where I felt comfortable and could run a nice wide line and put the car in the spots that I want to. And these could be just like small uh, adjustments on the shock, small air pressure changes. We're talking like one or two PSI of air pressure changes one or two clicks, either being um, three-eighths towed in the rear or a half-inch towed in the rear. You know, very small adjustments go a long way on cars like these when you have good tires and you can feel everything. Um, those kind of adjustments you might not feel in a Pro-Am car or something that's like you got some pretty hard compound tires, but something like this, we need every one of those adjustments. But I'm absolutely happy with how the day ended. Um, obviously, would want to continue further on. I did a lot of behind the scenes filming with uh, Formula D itself, with doing the under the hood, um, in-depth video interview they did with me. That was pretty cool. So that'll come out soon. And uh, yeah, man, stoked to continue and just keep on the progress. I'm having a good time. Top 16 two times this year. Let's just work with momentum. And uh, thank you for joining this DNA Motoring video. Check out the CA Auto Parts video on the other channel. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Peace, dudes. Send me off with one more lead run. And oh, okay. Pump it up, bro. Give All it a right. good one. Well, Pretend like I did way better than I did. Okay. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, we got Jeff Jones at English Town getting ready to line up on this grand stage. The Coliseum in New Jersey. He's going up to the line, going through the chicanes with some velocity and some speed. Ooh. Real feisty man up there. Coming in with a nice initiation, going to the first out of zone, rubbing that back bumper against that wall, going into that transition over the drag strip into the outer zone two. Oh, mercy, the angle he's getting all the way around. And now comes the diesel zone. He flicks that car, e-brake, and then back on the gas. So he's going on the outer zone three's wall and rubbing that back bumper. Oh, doctor. <laughs> That's freaking awesome.